EVE Online and Elite Dangerous are the two biggest sandbox MMO games out there. It's only natural that we compare these two epic games. Let me first clarify that these are very different games that both have really old origins as far as games go. Elite Dangerous is the fourth incarnation of the Elite game series, which got its start way back in 1984. The game has been totally remade to fit with modern specs, with the most recent incarnation starting in 2014. EVE Online, on the other hand, began in 2003, and the amazing thing about it is that it never went through a reincarnation. The same game has been continuously upgraded now for years and years. Imagine the coding nightmare that this can cause, possibly with legacy code that may be over 10 years old. But this is also kind of remarkable. Alright, let's first cover the universe and setting of these two games. EVE Online takes place in a distant star cluster called New Eden, which contains just under 8,000 star systems and has 21,000 years in the future. The ships have short-use warp drives that get them around solar systems, but use stargates, wormholes, and sometimes jump drives for all interstellar travel. There are no aliens, just many factions of humans, rogue AIs, cyborgs, some mutants, and everything in between. EVE Online's universe is indeed pretty big, with a lot of backstory and lore behind it. There's just one problem, though. Most of these star systems you see here were created years ago, before the advent of modern astronomy and the detection of thousands of exoplanets. So the celestial bodies don't move, there are no binary or trinary star systems, things like that. I mean, it isn't ridiculously off, but astronomically speaking, the EVE universe is not scientifically accurate at all for those of us who are astronomy geeks. But to EVE Online's credit, it does have an interesting minigame called Project Discovery, which allows players to cull through real astronomical data on real exoplanets in an effort to identify exoplanets that computers were unable to. So the science community has tapped into the giant human resource that is the EVE Online player base to help us discover new exoplanets. And this is pretty awesome, in fact, Scott Manley has done a video about this, I recommend you watch it. Now on to Elite Dangerous. This game takes place in the Milky Way galaxy in the 34th century. If you think 8,000 stars is a lot, well how about 400 billion? This game goes out of its way to simulate our galaxy and nearby star clusters to scale and detail based on current science. If I wanted to teach a kid about astronomy, I would definitely play Elite Dangerous with them. Even though traveling from one system to the next takes only a matter of seconds, the galaxy is so vast it would take us players many decades to explore it all and to realize that this is all based on the reality of the universe. Space travel on Elite Dangerous is a humbling, one might even say, spiritual or luminous experience. Oh yeah, and there are true aliens in Elite Dangerous. They are rare, but there is at least one other living spacefaring species called Lothargoids, plus extinct civilizations. But you're not going to find an alien under every rock. Usually you have to really set out to find them. Now onto the aesthetics and gameplay style. EVE Online allows you to fly dozens and dozens of different ship types, far more than any other space game. The flight is in third person view, with data all over the place for you to interpret. The idea is that you are mind linked with your ship from a capsule, so you wouldn't see any kind of cockpit or ship interior. CCP Games dipped their toes in this a few years ago with the first person character view that could only be used in stations. But the player base got so annoyed that they weren't fixing a host of other problems with the game, so they pretty much abandoned this. Now EVE has continuously upgraded their graphics engine, but it's remarkably forgiving for lower end systems. It's clean and efficient, and still in my opinion, fairly nice visually. Now if you're playing EVE correctly, most of the time you don't want to be focused on these visuals, but on the data to be most efficient. For that reason, the game is often jokingly called Spreadsheets in Space. However, the game truly is immersive. There is just so much to do that no one ever masters all of the gameplay styles available to you. The risk versus reward dynamic of the game is truly endless. Just remember, almost anything gained in EVE can be taken away. Elite Dangerous is more of a space flight simulator than EVE. You experience the ship from the cockpit view, and this is done in such a way that you almost feel the G-forces, heat, cold, and vibrations of the ship with the exquisitely done sounds. The ships will shudder, creak, groan, 
and moan as you take them through the maneuvers. Most space flight is pretty much manual, unlike an Eve, where you lightly bounce off other ships or objects in a very subtle kind of way. In Elite Dangerous, you can crash, get stuck, or get burnt, and this can lead to some really hilarious but maddening or delightful outcomes. You can also land on many planets that don't have an atmosphere. Frontier Games plans to really expand this planet-side exploration aspects of the game. Now, in a funny way, when you first get started with Elite Dangerous, it is far, far less forgiving than EVE Online because you have to learn how to fly your ships, and this is a hazardous learning curve. Some might say it's a learning cliff. EVE Online has designated rookie systems, and they take you through career agents to help you get started in a relatively safe space. But in the long run, there is simply a lot more going on with EVE Online's gameplay, making it overall a far, far more complex game. Now we come to the aspects that make the real difference, and that is the player community and how it's set up. I'll start with Elite Dangerous because it's a little easier. Elite Dangerous has three gameplay modes, solo play, private group, and open play. This means that if you want to play all by yourself, and still have an effect on the Elite Dangerous universe, such as the background simulation, this is an option with solo play. If you want to fly just with your friends, you can choose private group play. If you want to play with the possibility of encountering other players in space, and maybe engage in some non-consensual PvP, then you can choose open play. But here's the catch. You're very unlikely to encounter a soul in Elite Dangerous unless you deliberately set out to do so participate in certain events, missions, or head to the most popular systems. In EVE there is no choice. When you log in, you are immediately sharing your gameplay universe with tens of thousands of others. EVE is set up to foster competition. EVE Online is a far more social game in this way, and the universe is far, far more affected by what players do. EVE is much more of a sandbox. EVE kind of reveals human nature. For the most part, the player base is friendly, but there is little to stop another player from trying to scam you, gank you, fight you, or troll you. Massive wars and space battles occur in EVE on a scale unmatched by any other game. The spirit of both of these games is fairly different. They don't really compete in my opinion. I love both of them. I play EVE for intensity, my friends, and a complex long-running challenge. EVE is a game that both fuels and breaks ambition. Even when I'm not doing anything intense such as PvE, there is a looming backdrop of pressure or challenge. I play Elite Dangerous to chill out and wind down. With Elite Dangerous, I could get a glass of wine and very leisurely explore bounty hunt or mission. It feels like there is no pressure. So tell me what you think about the difference between EVE Online and Elite Dangerous. Some of you hate EVE but love Elite Dangerous. Some of you are standoffish about Elite Dangerous and prefer EVE Online. I like both. Tell me what you think in the comments below. And thank you for watching Space Friends. Be sure to subscribe, like, and check out my other videos. Some you'll see appearing on the screen now. Until next time.